Hey everybody, Jay down here in Belize again. So today's video, I'm going to uh, give you an overview of my solar hot water heating system. So this is a close up look at the solar hot water heater. Uh, I have two units here at the property. This is the one uh, that um, feeds hot water into the utility shed there uh, for laundry and for the shower, uh, the outdoor shower by the pool. Uh, so this is a pressurized system, so that's a pressurized tank. Um, it's about 40 to 50 PSI that I use here at the property. Um, there are two types of systems for solar hot water heating. There's pressurized and non-pressurized, and you want to make sure you get the right one. If you hook up a pressurized water system to a non-pressurized uh, solar water heater, you will blow out the glass tubes um, because the water in those systems will actually flow through the gas or the glass tubes. Um, the glass tubes on this system, um, actually, uh, they do not have water flowing through them. Um, inside here, there's actually a copper rod. I believe it's probably filled with some kind of oil. Um, the, the glass tubes focus the sunlight onto the copper rods, and then the copper rods carry the heat up into the tank. So I've got a 40-gallon tank on this unit, and um, basically it conducts... Uh, the heat in into the water um, so now I'll uh, I'll walk you through the solar water heater system for the house because that one uh, there's an extra component uh, for electric water heating so here's the second solar water heater unit this is the one on the roof of the house and uh, um, not sure how well it's going to show up on the video here but uh, this one I had to install uh, a backflow preventer. I had a, a little issue here um, because I wasn't using the hot water. I was gone for a few weeks back in Minnesota and uh, the pressure relief valve wasn't working correctly and it overheated and actually started um, uh, conducting hot water back down the cold water line and started melting the PVC pipe. So we installed a backflow preventer on this one so that it couldn't do that, some added protection. Now from here, um, the water will go down into an electric water heater, uh, which is below the house. Uh, so here's where the water lines come down the side of the house. We come underneath and here's my on-demand electric water heater. Now this is a, a very specific type. Uh, it's an EcoSmart. And um, I went with this because unlike other on-demand water heaters, which are basically either on or they're off, um, anytime it senses water flowing through, they're, they're full on, 100% um, draw, or if it's a gas heater, it's just 100% heat. Um, this one is smart. It'll actually detect the temperature of the incoming water and it will adjust its power output accordingly um, to rise the temperature to the desired set point. So on the front there, we've got that, that silver knob. That, that allows me to dial in the desired temperature. Um, it's off right now um, because I don't need it. Um, but when I, when I do need it, uh, I dial in the, the temperature. It's got a digital um, uh, thermostat on it. And um, the, you can actually see the power draw if you hook up a power meter to it. Um, you'll actually see the power draw start out at 100% and then as the hot water comes down from the roof, um, starts to warm up the, uh, the residual water that's in the pipe, you'll see the power stepping down on this unit. Um, the solar water heater works so well, uh, however, I actually just turned off the electric water heater. I don't even use it anymore. Um, I put it in because I was concerned that uh, if we had a lot of cloudy days, uh, if I had a lot of guests staying here taking showers, especially at night or early morning uh, before the sun comes up, I thought I wouldn't have enough hot water. Um, so far, um, it's just been me and me and my wife staying here, so we really haven't tested it under a heavy guest load, but so far I haven't needed the electric water heater at all, but it's good to have as a backup um, in case you do have several days of cloudy weather, which we certainly could down here in the rainy season. All right, and finally, one last thing I wanted to point out here is the pressure relief valve on this unit. 
uh, extremely important. It will get used. Um, because this is a pressurized system, uh, the boiling point of water is actually a much higher temperature than you would normally get if you're just boiling a pot of water on the stove, for example. Um, your water temperature with this system being pressurized uh, is easily over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so it gets extremely hot. And uh, that's important to note because if you don't have uh, good mixing valves in your showers, in your faucets, um, it is possible to burn yourself pretty badly if you've got 100% hot water coming out of a fixture. So um, when you're plumbing, do be careful about that. Um, this is much hotter water than you're probably used to in a standard North American residential um, hot water system. Um, and it's extremely common pretty much every day uh, when we've got 100% um, sun, you're going to see steam uh, or hot water leaking out of that valve. Um, sometimes maybe 10, 15 minutes at a time because it builds up that much pressure. Uh, it's not a problem. Um, you know, your system's not broken. Um, in fact, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, if it doesn't relieve that pressure, uh, you're going to start um, blowing out uh, your tank um, or you know, possibly your copper fittings inside there um, coming out of the glass tubes. Um, all in all, I got to say, I've been really impressed with this system. Um, it works extremely well. Um, and basically I'm getting free hot water. Um, I can't say enough good things about this system. I've been extremely impressed. I was very skeptical at first. I don't see a lot of people using these, um, but it works fantastic and I highly recommend it.